Welcome to the next episode of the Microbiology Tube. So today we'll be talking about the Staphylococcus aureus. So Staphylococcus aureus is the pathogenic bacteria which are mainly found in the paws. So whenever a persons are infected uh, by the wound or have the wound infection, the majority of the bacteria isolated is the Staphylococcus aureus. So there is a rise in concern about the Staphylococcus aureus because the Staphylococcus are becoming more and more resistant in, in these days. So if you see the methicillin resistance Staphylococcus has had already been immersed and now there is the emergence of the vancomycin resistance Staphylococcus aureus. So it is difficult to treat by treat to those kinds of the infections caused by those bacteria. So now I am going to define you a simple definitions or simple uh, background of this Staphylococcus aureus. So firstly if I start about the Staphylococcus aureus then I will start about the Staphylococcus. So Staphylococcus means Staphylo as we have already mentioned this Staph is uh, like a graph in shape. So if you see here all the all all these you know figures in the figure if you see all these are coca insect and these are cluster insect so such like the bacteria is such like the crabs these are cluster insect so if you see the cocos if there is written the cocos majority of the coca or the cocos bacteria are the gram positive except there are some of the coca bacteria like the nasari and the brahmanella so these are the uh, these are the gram negative but the bacteria like the staphylococcus streptococcus micrococcus enterococcus so these bacteria have cocos at the last and these bacteria are gram positive so you can remember by in that way so if you see staphylococcus aureus are the spherical insect these are the gram positive bacteria and you know the aureus means that is the yellow in color so yellow in color in term of the colonies so staphylococcus aureus uh, will produce the yellow colonies in the nutrient agar so it was first observed by the von recklin hansons in 1871 so he observed that bacteria staphylococcus bacteria in a pus so staphylococcus aureus you know it is the it is a pathogenic bacteria staphylococcus saprophyticus is the pathogenic bacteria but staphylococcus epidermidis staphylococcus you know these are the these are not the pathogenic bacteria so if you see here the staphylococcus aureus produce the yellow colonies and it is it is a pathogenic uh, bacteria so where has the staphylococcus albus that is the that produces the white colonies and these are not the pathogenic one so i doesn't mean to say that uh, allo colonies are pathogenic whereas the white colonies are non pathogenic it doesn't mean that so i'm just telling how the scientists of that is differentiated the staphylococcus aureus and the staphylococcus albus so next is the staphylococcus are the spherical in shape they are one micrometer in diameter they are gram positive bacteria they are non motile and non sporing so it means they do not have the flagella and they do not have produced the spores similarly the staphylococcus aureus has one of the distinguishing characteristics that is the catalase positive and coagulase positive staphylococcus bacteria all the staphylococcus aureus are catalase positive Staph, all the staphylococcus uh, or uh, staphylococcus are catalyst positive streptococcus are catalyst negative micrococcus are again catalyst positive so <coughs> if you see the after if you see any of the gram positive cocci so whenever you observe the gram positive cocci through the microscope you have to do the catalyst test if it is the catalyst test then it, it will be either the staphylococcus or the micrococcus so in order to separate whether the bacteria is micrococcus or the staphylococcus you have to do the oxidation oxidative and fermentative test that is called the OF test so if you do the oxidative and fermentative test the ba th then it will be clear whether the bacteria is staphylococcus or the micrococcus because the staphylococcus bacteria these are the fermentative bacteria whereas the uh, micrococcus are the 
oxidative bacteria so from this we can differentiate so after the differentiation so after the differentiation the next proceed the next thing we have to do is to separate the species so as i have already mentioned the staphylococcus aureus is one of the most predominant bacteria which is pathogenic so in the clinical laboratory we have to separate the staphylococcus aureus from other species so one of the distinguishing features is the coagulase positive so what does we do in the coagulase in the coagulase test we put the human serum and in the in the in the human serum or the we put we put the colonies of the bacteria so what will the bacteria do so the bacteria will convert the fibrin into the fibrin to clot so after the it has been clot so then there will be the visual clumps will be seen in this way so the bacteria is said to be the catalase positive one sorry the coagulase positive one so if the bacteria is catalase if the bacteria is gram positive cocci with the clostridium shape and it is the catalase positive and it is the coagulase positive it is confirmed to be the staphylococcus aureus so the question is uh, there are others you know uh, biochemical test to by which we can differentiate the staphylococcus aureus one is the mannitol fermentations so mannitol fermentations it means that it will ferment the mannitol into the acid so it will ferment the mannitol into the acid so many of you have uh, have known about one of the medium that is called the msa medium that stands for the mannitol salt agar so that stands for the mannitol salt agar so what happens is that the mannitol will convert into the into the acid so what happens the mannitol will be converted into the acid and after the acid so after there is the acid production the phenol red indicator will change its color from the pink or red pink to the um, to the allo golden allo in color so the mechanism behind the mannitol salt agar is that there is the mannitol agar there is the mannitol that mannitol will form in the form in the mannitol to form the acid and if there is rise in the p uh, the rise in the acidity then what happens is that the phenol red is the indicator so it will change its color from the uh, pink red to the allo in color so there is also called there is also next term that is called the s which is called the salt so mannitol salt means there is the presence of the 7.5 salt per concentration 7.5 7.5 nacl is present so uh, if you see there is the presence of the 7.5 percent nacl and i have written here that the staphylococcus aureus are the halo tolerant bacteria it means it can tolerate the salt so together if you see the mannitol salt agar so staphylococcus aureus are responsible for productions sorry fermentations of the mannitol so it will produce the acid and it will change the color from the red to the yellow so in that way we can see whether the bacteria will form in the mannitol or not the next is there is the high concentration of the salt and staphylococcus aureus are the halo tolerant bacteria so it will it will tolerate the seven 7.5 percent of the nacl some of the strains of the unit staphylococcus aureus are also there which can tolerate up to 10 percent of the nacl so now if you see here so it will also reduce the nitrate into the nitrile so it can also reduce the nitrate into the nitrile staphylococcus are the methyl red positive bogus poscar positive and it is all it also produces the enzymes called, called as the phosphatase enzymes so next is the staphylococcus will reduce the telluride which will produce the black colonies so in the medium there if we put the potassium telluride so that telluride will be reduced and the colonies will be seen as the black in color so so next is the cultural characteristics so here i have taken the two pictures from the internet so one is the one is the staphylococcus aureus in the nutrient agar if you see here this allo colonies is the staphylococcus aureus so after the 24 hours of incubation staphylococcus aureus will produce the last colonies so these are circular uh, convex smooth shiny opaque and easily emulsifiable so it will easily emulsify so next is the staphylococcus aureus will produce the golden allo colonies in the msa 
MSA. So this is the neutron agar. So this is the neutron agar and this is the mannitol salt agar. So you can see here. So this is the Staphylococcus other than that of the Staphylococcus aureus and this is the Staph aureus. So here you can see the golden yellow colonies of the Staphylococcus aureus here whereas here you can see so whereas the here you can see the uh, you can see the other Staphylococcus aureus which is not which doesn't form in the manitone. So now what can this what at what temperature the bacteria can survive so staphylococcus uh, bacteria or staphylococcus aureus has the wide range of temperature in which it can survive so it can survive from 10 to the 40 degree centigrade whereas the optimum temperature is about 37 degree centigrade so it has the ph requirement of about 7.4 and it has 7.6 is the ph requirement so similarly it is the aerobes as well as the facultative anaerobes what does that mean that mean that it can survive in the presence of the oxygen at well as well as it can survive in the absence of the oxygen so these are the facultative aerobes and the facultative anaerobes so the next characteristic is that it produces the clear zone of hydrolysis. So here you can see this is the Staphylococcus aureus and this is the blood agar. So here this is the clear zone of hydrolysis. So next character is that the blood agar can produce the clear zone of hydrolysis. Sorry, in the blood agar the Staphylococcus aureus can produce the clear zone of hydrolysis. So thank you for watching my video. If you really like my video, please don't forget to press the like button. Please subscribe my channel and please share the video. Thank you.